the concerns that came up today are, you know, they must be authorized and we're, we're worried about additional lawsuits. And I think the question has to be then, why not put this in front of the voters? The governor has changed elections, has moved dates, has used executive orders. Why, if there's any doubt, if you want to have a clean bill and stand up to the constitutional mustard when we can put this out to the voters, why are we afraid to ask the voters? The voters are very aware of the very turbulent times our nation is going through the COVID and, and, and the horrific actions that have been taking place so we can, Americans are, are smart, the New Jerseyans are smart. Why can't we put this up to the voters and have them approve um, this? And then we take all the other things off the table, all the uncertainty comes off the table if this goes on the ballot and the governor has the authority to move this, the legislators have the authority to move this to a, a November ballot and maybe even with your great legal minds in Trenton there, maybe even sooner, but why can't we um, ask the voters for approval this and make sure it's done um, properly. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head, Assemblyman. These are extraordinary times. Um, we are in a fiscal crisis like states across the country. We are looking at a severe budget crisis. Um, and that's if we if we accept all of the cuts that the administration is proposing getting through September 30th, we still have, you know, very small fund balances for both June 30th and September 30th. Um, and then come October 1st, we're looking at, you know, pension payments that need to be made, school funding payments that need to be made, um, you know, billions in payments that we're going to be need, needing to make quickly. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a question of this is a crisis, um, it's a disaster, and we need to act accordingly and get access to this funding, which the federal government has established and, and, and set up only because we are all faced, we're all in the same boat and facing these enormous COVID-19 related crises to give crisis, to give uh, governments the opportunity to try and help get through the crisis um, uh, yeah. as well as possible. And, and Treasurer, and I appreciate it. There's nobody on this um, call today that doesn't have the best interest in New Jersey and know that we're in difficult times and want to make sure our state can continue and our our, all of our workers and our and essential workers from it, but I just don't see the need to to jeopardize and break the Constitution when, and you had said earlier in testimony, this has been going on for months. We've had months and months, and you didn't have to be an economist or to know that we were headed into dire straits, and we procrastinated along. You know, we could have had this definitely in time for the voters and had done it the proper way in a, in a legal way, and I'm worried now, and, and, uh, and Assemblyman Berticelli, when he's asked, it sounds to me like we're not even taking off at a table the modest cuts, the roughly billion dollars in cuts from the budget. And I, I think it's important to point out to the taxpayers that those aren't really cuts. We're taking the senior freeze away and we're also, you know, the two, um, the homestead rebate. These are tax cuts that's going to help stimulate the economy and help the most vulnerable. So really we're taking away revenue from, from our citizens in that billion dollar number. And I still, I don't see any logical reason why we can't ask the voters and and, and the administration prepare a good case and, and, and tell them the times and get it on a ballot, even if you have a special election or do it, but to have this thing tied up in courts. And when it loses, I think they're going to regret it. This gets pushed through um, today. And I think it's also important, you know, we all know the devastation that COVID has done and, and, the, and the loss of life and the illness and the, and the cost to all of the state of New Jersey. But I think it's important to point out that billions and billions of dollars has come in from the federal government on the COVID, you know, with the hospitals and the transit and the, uh, um, and you know, all, all across the board, I think the number is somewhere around eight or nine billion dollars is um, coming in. But I'm not convinced today that we're not going to draw this down and get into another 35-year bond payment and just devastate the state on our on our on our bond ratings. And uh, I think this is just going to be moved on if it goes through today to our our kids and our grandchildren and. I don't even have grandchildren yet, but maybe my great grandchildren. I don't know when and if this will ever be paid off, but I think it's very destructive um, having an open checkbook. And I'm worried that you know it's going to stop us from finding any inefficiencies, which we all know there are, and can be cut back in government. So, um, you know, I, I I appreciate your time, and I don't know if you have anything to add, but I think the only way to properly move this forward is to put it on the ballot. And the governor, I'm uh, sure, has the power to um, and try to put it on the ballot and and um, uh, obey the the law and the constitution, which we all swore to uphold. So thank you.